Hey guys, Derek and Paula here. And if you've been following along on our previous videos, you'll know that we've been really busy all summer doing a lot of really hard work trying to get our little homestead going. Trying to dig trenches, fill them with wood, cover them with dirt, just so that we can grow some plants. So far that's worked out really well, but we've also been reading a lot about another method which is way easier. It's called the Ruth Stout Method, and it's all about the hay. So today, we're gonna play... In the hay. <laughs> But before we get started, let's have a quick recap of our garden experimentation thus far. We started out in the spring by building a hugel culture mound. Hugel culture is a method of permaculture that emulates the natural processes found in a typical forest. We've created several videos which explain in detail how this works, but essentially we dug a trench, filled it with dead and rotting wood, a bunch of other organic material, and then buried it all with the topsoil that we'd removed from the trench in the first place. The end result was a self-fertilizing vegetable garden that requires little water, no weeding, and provides an abundance of food. By the end of the growing season, we were so impressed by the results of our hugelkultur mound that we decided to build two more, but this time with the help of a backhoe. As you can see, we've now smoothed out the soil on the new mounds and covered them with a protective layer of hay so that we're ready to plant next spring. But as you can also see, we've got a lot of extra room in our garden area. And that brings us to another method of permaculture, known as the Ruth Stout method. Now let me tell you a little bit about Ruth, because honestly, she was incredible. She was born in Kansas in 1884, but moved to New York when she was 18. While there, she dabbled in an eclectic assortment of jobs. For instance, she worked as a nurse, a bookkeeper, a secretary, a business manager, a factory worker, a lecturer, and debate coordinator. She opened a small tea shop, worked for a fake mind-reading act, and as if that wasn't enough, she even spent some time in Russia in the early 1920s to assist in famine relief. But it wasn't until 1930 when she and her new husband settled down on a 55-acre farm in Connecticut that she finally found her true passion, gardening. For over a decade, she followed conventional gardening wisdom by using plows, tillers, chemical fertilizers, and lots of hard work. But one day in early spring, while waiting for her plowman to show up, she had an epiphany. If so many other plants grow easily without any of these unnatural additions, why couldn't she just treat her garden the same way? So she threw some seeds on her unplowed soil, covered them lightly, and was astonished by the results. What she discovered is that most of the traditional hard work of gardening was completely unnecessary, and in many cases even detrimental to the success of her harvests. Over time, she refined her method of lazy gardening, and concluded that by simply covering her seeds in a thick layer of mulch, she could avoid all digging, tilling, weeding, watering, and fertilizing. Ruth would later say that, I don't do anything I don't want to do unless I have to, and I don't have to. So there we are. She experimented with many types of natural mulches, but found that good old-fashioned hay was the best. The basic premise behind the Ruth Stout method is quite simple. Cover the ground with hay. When asked how much hay was needed, Ruth would stoically reply, more. Over time, the lower layers decompose and naturally add nutrients to the soil. Meanwhile, the upper layers help to keep the soil cool in the summer, warm in the winter, prevent evaporation between rains, and smother out any weeds. It's recommended that you prepare this type of garden in the fall and then begin planting the following spring by simply pushing some of the hay aside and laying the seeds on the fresh, fertile soil underneath. Every spring and fall, more hay is added and the cycle continues. This is what's often referred to as building soil. Because every time a new layer of hay is added, it replaces the bulk of the previous year's mulch, which has since composted into rich organic soil for planting. And once again, you never dig, till, water, or weed. No fertilizers are necessary, and rather than becoming depleted over time, your soil nutrients actually improve with every passing season. So it was armed with this information that we set out to find a local source of inexpensive hay. And luckily for us, our brother-in-law Andy, who you might remember as the grower of the giant white Armenian cucumber, knew exactly who to ask. 
As it turns out, his parents had a huge amount of hay in the loft of their barn, which had accidentally gotten wet, meaning it was no longer appropriate for animal feed. But spoiled hay still makes perfect mulch, so we drove out to the farm, crammed as much as we could into Andy's truck, and brought it back to our place. Okay, now that we have everything we need, let's get gardening. You may recall that our garden layout includes space for six 30 foot by 4 foot raised beds, as well as one larger bed. These three have already been used for hugel culture mounds, and in the interest of experimentation, we've decided to use these two spaces for Ruth Stout based hay only gardens. We began by marking the perimeter of the beds with string. This was just so that we could keep all of the hay contained within our desired dimensions. Next, we carried over a couple of bales, cut the twine, and began pulling them apart. We did our best to fluff up the tightly packed hay as we went, and slowly laid out the first layer. From what we've read, 8 inches seems to be a good depth when first constructing the garden bed, and in the interest of keeping things consistent, we created a simple measuring stick. Then, by plunging the stick into the garden in different locations, we could quickly and easily see that a second layer was necessary. So, back to the hay bales for more mulch, and after a few more minutes of fluffing and layering, we measured again, and we're good to go. So there we go. Two Ruth Stout gardens, both complete in less than an hour. So what do you think? Was that easier than Hugo culture? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so now unfortunately we'll have to wait uh, until next year to see if they work as well as Hugo culture, but they're definitely easier to set up. <laughs> and you may notice that we've still got space for one more of these long gardens over there and a big one behind us, but you'll have to wait to see what we do with that. See you next time. Oh wait, there's one more thing I'd like to mention about Ruth Stout before you go. And this is perhaps the most important part. You see, despite all the interesting things she did during her youth, Ruth was 45 years old before she'd ever even thought about gardening. And she was in her 60s before discovering the method which would later adopt her name and make her famous. And even with such a late start, Ruth lived to be 96, which meant she had over three decades to publish multiple books, go on countless speaking tours, and explore and share her passion with everyone she encountered. I point this out because I think it's a really good reminder that it's never too late to try something new, find your passion, and make a difference. So no matter where you are in your journey, I encourage you to get out there and plant some seeds, because you just never know what might grow.